I would not blame you to be in disbelief for what I'm about to tell you, but today we are actually, incredibly, amazingly, gonna be making a start on the new hamster cage. My voice, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice from shock. We're not gonna be doing the entire cage today. It's not gonna be completed in this video because first of all, I don't have the glass for it yet because I wanna wait, I wanna wait. I want to wait until I've built the outside of the enclosure so I can get the exact measurements for the glass because I'm going to get it cut perfectly to size and I don't want to mess that up. That's going to be at some point this month, I hope. And number two, we're not going to be doing the inside of the enclosure today, which is going to be all the shelves and houses and stuff like that. So all I'm planning on doing in this video is the outer frame of the cage and also the lid, which needs to be shortened down and made to size. So here's what I've got to work with. Uh, this is the wood that's going to be for the inside of the enclosure, all the shelves and stuff. But like I said, that's a later thing. So we're going to ignore this today. Wow, I'm way more optimistic about the number of fingers I have. Yeah. This is the lid. This is the lid I built for the Petri dish. That was my previous big enclosure. We couldn't bring that with us when we moved, but I was able to bring the lid with me. Now, the only problem is the lid is a little bit longer than this new cage is gonna be. So all I have to do with this, all I have to do, I'm concerned it's gonna be a bigger job than I have it in my head. Uh, I have to shorten it. So we'll see how that goes. Now, these are the parts that matter. This is the main wood I'm gonna be using for building the enclosure. These are the Meltorp tabletops from Ikea. I have three of them for this enclosure. And the reason I've gone with these, the only reason I went with these is because back when I thought I was supposed to be building the enclosure at the beginning of the year, there was a massive lumber shortage. And so I couldn't just get straight up raw lumber like I'd usually use, uh, which would have given me more flexibility when it came to sizing and stuff like that. And this was all I could get hold of. The lumber shortage is not so bad anymore. If I just, if I just waited. These cost me, I think 17 euros each. So a total cost of 51 euros for all three. Just ignore the no knife sign. Oh, it has holes in it. Oh, that's interesting. I was not expecting that. Oh, it's okay. The holes are only on one side. Ah, 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 ah. No holes on this side. This will be the inside of the enclosure. The holes will be the ugly side. <laughs> the last few times I've made cage building videos, I've had a few people ask me if in future I could maybe possibly perhaps share my written plans for my enclosure designs because they feel like it would really help them out to see, you know, the actual notes written down and the diagrams and everything. Um, now there's a, there's a good reason why I don't usually share my notes, my drawings, my, my diagrams, my plans. And I hope that it's highlighted to you now because I will be sharing with you my exact plans for this enclosure that I made at the beginning of this year. Uh, as you may note, it is on an envelope, which also has, I, I, if I remember correctly, this was me using the, the whirl filter on TikTok and trying to draw a cat. It turned out very good, as you can see, uh, but my plans, <laughs> My plans are written on the back of this envelope, which I lost for a long time. Here's what they look like up close. If you can make sense of them, please feel free to use them because even I have to decipher this now and I'm the one who wrote it. So yeah, that's why, that's why I don't usually share my cage building plans. It's not because I'm some very secretive person who doesn't want to share this information. It's because this is confusing, embarrassing, and quite frankly, useless even to me. <laughs> I've just looked at this again. There's even random math up here for a project that has nothing to do with this. For a, a, a balcony bench, which I didn't end up building because I decided to, to do something else with the balcony. So there's random math in there too. I'll try and figure this shit out. So apparently these are 125 by 75 centimeters, and I don't need them to be exactly that size. I think one of them, one of them stays uncut. And I think for the side pieces, I need to cut one of them in half. I gotta take some width off it as well. It is not a good plan for writing on my arm. And then how big does the back need to be? Have I not written the measurements for the back? Why have I not written the measurements for the back? Okay, okay, presumably, what have, what, I've, minused, I've minus two off there, so that's the thickness. Two is the thickness, which means the edges they sit, okay, they're sitting, uh huh. I have 40 minutes left, I'm gonna take five of those and I'm gonna figure this out. <laughs> Good news, I figured it out. And I wrote the new plans on a post-it note instead. Also on my wrist in case I lost the post-it note. Figured out what the problem was. I hadn't taken into account the width of the lid that I'm working with, which is a really awkward width. It's 71.5 centimeters and I hate working with decimals, but I have to get it the exact right width Otherwise the lid won't fit. This, this is, this is now I remember why I wanted to work with raw wood for this project because I already had the lid constricting me. Everything makes sense now, it's all coming back.
my poor camera is absolutely <laughs> covered in wood dust. As am I, to be fair. Uh, well, we are 40 minutes over schedule, so that's wonderful. And all I got done with the wood cutting, which to be fair, um, is a huge part of it. I mean, now it's just drilling some holes in and screwing all together. So now I'm trying to decide whether I risk doing it tonight or whether I try and wiggle some space into my schedule tomorrow. You know what, let's get the pilot holes done at least and then and then we'll see from there. So here I have what's going to be the back piece. This one is the 125 by 60 centimeter piece and uh, the base is going to be drilled into this bottom raw edge, but these sides are gonna be drilled into the side walls of the enclosure. So I need three pilot holes here and I'm just gonna use one of the off cut bits of wood just so I can figure out where my guidelines are for making these marks. First hole I will do near the top, just in the center of that little area that I've marked. The second hole I'm gonna do a few centimeters up from the bottom, just to allow space in case I do put a screw in from the base on that corner so it doesn't bump into the other screw. And then I'll put another one in the center of those two marks, just to make sure everything is held together nice and tight. And since I'm gonna be using flat headed screws, I also wanna countersink each one of these holes to make sure the screws sit flush with the wood. So this is the back of the enclosure, or what will be the back of the enclosure. We have all the pilot holes drilled in all of them countersunk. Raw side of the board facing up, the bit that we cut. There we go, that's on top. And we're going to screw in the sides. This should be the easy part. Easy peasy. Back and sides done. Time for the base. Lovely. And of course, we must not forget wheels. This is my biggest tip, my biggest piece of advice when you are building cages, put wheels on the bottom of them. Obviously, if you're making it to fit on a shelf or something, that's a little different, but if it's gonna be a floor standing cage, put wheels on it. Thank me later, this will save you so much trouble when it comes to having to move the cage around. Even if your enclosure doesn't feel that heavy when you're building it, once you've added all the substrate, the toys, the shelves, all of that stuff, that's gonna add a ton of extra weight and these are just gonna make your life a hell of a lot easier. Also, if you're building a big cage like this, make sure you've got wheels in the middle to support it, otherwise it will bow and potentially break. And for the same reason, don't put your wheels right at the edges, bring them in a little bit because that'll just provide a little extra support to the base. One near each corner, two in the middle. Best configuration. This is the fun bit. And by fun, I mean this part that will end in my death or somebody else's murder. Either way is fine with me. So as you can see, there's a fair bit of extra length on this, which I don't need, I really don't need. So we're gonna need to cut this down and doing so is absolutely gonna end up with me crying because mesh is a vicious little creature. It's horrible, it bites a lot. This right here, this will be the thing that tests my sanity this evening because I do not have the appropriate tool for taking staples out of wood, which means I have to use a much slower method for taking staples out of wood. And there are a lot of these staples to take out of this wood. Flathead screwdriver, stubby little hammer. Do not come at me for this method, all right? Bitching is strictly prohibited. Also, I realize you're gonna see me using wire cutters later and somebody's gonna say, why didn't you just use the wire cutters for it? Uh, quite simply because I've done that before and it leaves sharp little bits of metal in the wood, which isn't safe for me at all. I know it's quite foreign for me to prioritize my safety, but just this one time. I will use pliers for removing these though, because otherwise I'm gonna kill my fingers. Oh, these need some WD-40 on them. Jeez, where are my other ones? Ta-da! Right, 
let's see how many cuts I can get. One piece off without a single scratch. This is my most pleasant experience yet. Scratch my elbow on that bit. Never mind. Oh, piece number two. I'm gonna put the edge of the lid back together and back in place, and then once the wood's in, I can saw away at these bits and have it perfectly flush with the edge of the wood. In theory. I mean, it's me, so. Now, one thing I'm always trying to do when I design new cages is improve on my previous designs. And as time has gone on and I've got better at building cages, those improvements have become smaller and smaller. And one of the small improvements I want to make this time is in regards to how I attach the lid to the cage. Now, on the Petri dish, this lid was attached by using some flat brackets on the side. And I always felt that looked kind of ugly, it always stood out to me. I didn't really like it. So this time, what I'm gonna be doing is using dowels. So I have an invisible attachment. It's a very easy thing to do, which makes me feel a little bit stupid for not having done it last time, but there we are, we learn and we move forward. I've got a nice big drill bit here and I'm gonna do three holes for dowels along this edge. There's the dowels. And then to mark out where they need to go in the side piece, make sure everything's lined up just right. And then once again, drill those holes. Now, if I wanted to, I could also put a bit of glue on this to make it a more permanent fixture. I'm not going to. If we do ever have to move this out of the room, um, I need to be able to take the whole thing apart. So I don't want anything to be too permanent. Take that Ikea, I'm making my own flat pack furniture. We have a small problem right here for some reason. Uh, that's a really tight fit this time. Oh, oh there we go. Need a bit of a stretch. A perfectly clean attachment. I mean, this this itself is not technically clean. It needs a new coat of paint because there's loads of all over it. But no hinges, no brackets, nothing. Beautiful. Where this piece of wood is sticking out, all I have to do is go in with the saw and just cut it flush and it'll be perfect. <laughs> I am so incredibly close to being finished with the frame of this enclosure and I will be so glad to be done with it. It's been too long. If I'm looking at this correctly because this is all in place now, it's all fixed to where it should be. The wood pieces have been cut down so I think all I have to do now is staple the mesh back into place. And then I think it's done. Not finished, finished, obviously you can't put an animal in there, but finished for the sake of this video. Finished. That's all, that's all I want to do today. It's all I can do today because like I said, I don't have the glass yet and I've got to, I've got to do the, sh I haven't made all the shelves and stuff for inside. Definitely needs a clean look of paint. It's like one of those really impractical cars with the wing doors that you can't park anywhere and that make you look like an idiot. I got round to it eventually. I get round to everything I say I'll do eventually. You just have to understand that there is an infinite time frame to every promise I make. I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. I hope you come back for the next video, uh, which should be significantly sooner than any other time this year. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the merch store if you haven't already, and I will see you guys soon, I guess. As long as I don't die in the meantime. <laughs>